Hello again. Um, yes, we are back. Uh, sorry for the abrupt uh, disruption to what is now I've called uh, part one of uh, the previous video. So uh, in that video, I was trying to uh, contextualize for us uh, the idea of uh, Unyoko or the vagina of a uh, galaxy being located, be, be, being located, <clears throat> as the ancients would put it in the constellation Scorpio, but more technically because of uh, now with that technology we can uh, we can we can have a closer observation of uh, of our stars. It actually sits between uh, the stinger of the Scorpio and uh, the arrow of uh, the Sagittarius man. We have placed, uh, <coughs> not we, sorry, that is where our galactic center is, <coughs> even at this very moment. That galactic center is birthing stars. That spiraling center, that super massive black hole, whom the ancients say here, uh, that is where the seat of uh, the mother Kali resides or the the root the root chakra the <clears throat> the phallus or the vagina area the the, um, the navel of our galaxy um the psalmist says uh he made darkness his hiding place and then when we mythologize it now we will say it is it is within that darkness that the ground of being is hidden this is where this is how we mythologize now but we know that uh, the deeper teachings they don't they don't necessarily take it in that uh, direction <clears throat> so um yes a galactic center it actually is uh, stars being born as we speak Unyoko or imomozi this is where the idea of uh, the bull that looks like uh, the vagina or uh, that symbol of the young, <clears throat> the bull's horns, the the wi the wild bull, or oh, those uh, those bulls uh, up north in Africa, those bulls with the long yeah, the bulls, the bull's horns, and then the symbol of the vagina. That is where it's coming from because, for the lo at some stage in the in the past centuries, the uh, <clears throat> the earth began in Scorpio, or our earth or our galaxy was born. From Scorpio. That is, uh, that is our birth. So, um, what else did I want to add there? Oh yes, and so directly um, across, directly across from uh, Imomozi or Inkomozi, directly across from that, 180 degrees from it, is uh, the Bull of Heaven, Uyisho, <coughs> in the east. Shonipa Uyisho Nunyoko. Yep. Um, these four pillars or these four uh, archangels uh, in, his, in uh, Ezekiel's vision is still the same thing in the book of uh, Ezekiel and uh, Revelation. Um, uh, these stars are dramatized as uh, the four living creatures. You know, when the Bible talks about the four living creatures, uh, that the one beast uh, had a face of a man, face of a lion, face of an ox, and the face of an eagle. Well, yep. It's still those four pillars. And so uh, the face of the man is Fomohot, the watcher in the south, again. And then we have uh, the face of the lion, which we said uh, was Regulus from the constellation Leo, the lion of Judah. And then we have, uh, you remember Yuri in the north? There we have uh, the face of an ox, the raging ox, Abaya, Uri El. In Hebrew, the, the head is called the Rosh. That's why they have a Rosh Hoshana. It, 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 it speaks to the notion of the elevated uh, place or the heaved up place. The heaven, um, if you will. This is why um, <clears throat> among the different cultures we have such titles as uh, Rishi or, uh, or the Roshi. Or we have uh, the Orishas. Uh-huh, you hear it? Yes. So yeah, we have um, 
in the north, the constellation Regulus, and then we have uh, <coughs> the face of the ox, yes, Aldebaran, yes, the face of the ox, Aldebaran, the red-eyed bull in the east. And then we have uh, the face of the eagle, Antares, the star cluster Antares. He resides over the west. And uh, yes, so yeah, that's Ezekiel's vision. To add on top of that, um, uh, we also have, um, <coughs> or, it's, or rather, let me say, it's also symbolized in the four horses of uh, the, apoc the apocalypse. Um, where we have, to use uh, the ecliptic again, where we have in the east, we will have uh, the pale or the white horse in spring, the lily white lamb of spring, and then we have um, <coughs> the green horse of uh, the summer solstice, and then we have um, the red horse, the red horse are uh, representing uh, the setting sun, the, 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 the setting sun in autumn. If you like, this is where you would tie in um, <coughs> the story of, um, um, is it Jacob and Esau? The one who came out, Ruby Red? <laughs> Ruby Red. Esau and Jacob, or Jacob and Esau, however you wanna, yes. That is the red horse. And then finally, at the bottom, we have um, the dark horse or the black horse, uh, signifying uh, the winter, <coughs> the winter solstice, the dark, the dark months when uh, the powers of uh, the powers of darkness rule over the earth. Yes, and um, oh yes, in, uh, in my let me just fix my hat. Just fix my hat so that I channel this information properly. <laughs> so yeah, uh, in, a in, in the last video, I touched on um, uh, the constellation, the Argo, or the Ark of, uh, of Noah. What I actually forgot to mention there is that um, <clears throat> actually that constellation, it's more south than east, yeah. You need to look south in order to see it that actually it is now called um, Canopus. And then we in the South, in our star laws, uh, we know the star as uh, Naka or Nanga, the horn. Now, uh, interestingly enough, when I spent time uh, in West Africa, Senegal, among uh, the wall of speakers, uh, my peoples there, the Serere, Jedi Jeff, I learned uh, the word for cow is, um, I hope you, yeah, there we go. The word for a cow is uh, the knack. Of which, if you think about it, it's still that same, that same word in Como. It's just that now we do away with uh, the motherly mm and the vowel. And then we are left with the VNK or the NAC, of which this root and linguistically interchangeable with the NG gives us uh, the root words for, yes, it also goes back to uh, the elevated, elevated status. Is in Kanyezi, in Kosi, in Kazimulo. In Kulu, aha, yes, in Kulu, in Kulu. Don't let these dimwits, these people who are always saying that, um, oh, so, sorry to use that language, yeah, but anyway, there's this, there, there's people who say that uh, the term Kulu, Kulu actually came uh, with the Europeans. No, no. It's based on the root NK, the NAK, or UNANGA, or NAKA, of which uh, it means uh, the horn. And now, um, <clears throat> among uh, Abesutu, actually, Abesutu men uh, would actually wait up uh, 
in the mountains around campfires. They would wait up until the early hours of the morning so that they can, uh, they can spot the star because uh, it's believed that the first person uh, to see it would become very prosperous that year. They would have a rich and, uh, and bountiful uh, harvest and good luck for their entire life. Same star in the north, it's the Argo, the Argonauts, it's Noah. In the south, it's who? It's Naga. To go into the writings of Ubabu Mutwa, he, ultra, he actually also has peace and love unto the ancestor. He also has a flood narrative uh, yeah, in, uh, in his book when he, to when he talks uh, about uh, the race that died. The race that died, we have uh, Odu and um, who is it again? The first mother, Marimba, I think. I think it's Marimba. Yeah, it's Odu and Marimba who ride onto who ride a fish onto the new world when uh, the great uh, when the great Ma destroys mankind. Just like just as we have in the, the the story of Noah, she destroys mankind because mankind had become exceedingly evil take this up a bit can be showing you my legs okay <clears throat> yes so uh the great ma the great ma with uh the with her husband uh usimagate the tree of life they decide to to do away with mankind through a what through a flood so uh yeah something else to add on there is that um oh yes uh the person who would see uh this star Back in the day, the king would give them uh, a heifer. And then uh, the day immediately after <clears throat> the day of the sighting, um, Izangoma, the sages and uh, the wizards would get together and examine their, uh, their bones and their, uh, and their divination sets and uh, still water in an effort to uh, predict the tribe's, the tribe's luck the coming year, how the harvests are going to be how prosperous the king was going to be that year. Manga Mavenda, the first person to actually spot uh, the ship of, uh, of Noah, Canopus, um, in the morning sky, announces th this discovery <clears throat> by climbing a hill and blowing uh, a sable antelope horn, di Palapala. Of which, uh, if you take it up the continent to the Middle East, it's the shofar. It's the blowing of the shofars. Um, what else can I... Yes, the Feast of Trumpets, the blowing of uh, the shofars. And so, uh, okay, yeah, now, now to get into uh, the stars, uh, the Pleiades who um, are affectionately called uh, the seven little nanny goats in some cultures, or the little pigs, Suculu. I think that's uh, from the, the Roman or the Greek, um, <coughs> the, the Greek uh, star law. Or, or, to bring it closer to home, I, you, we always need to bring it closer to home. It has to make sense in our folklore, in our star law as well, it has to add up, it has to syncretize. And so um, the wild pig analogy um, in our cultures, uh, it's the totem of uh, the people of the two. It's the totem of uh, the Balubedi, Maha Mojaji, Mojaji. <clears throat> the Mojaji of uh, the stars, uh, the Pleiades, or uh, the Plejaden, if you are German, the, the Jaji or the Magi or Maya, located on the, the shoulder of the bull. Uh, now, uh, this word, the, 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 the play, is actually from uh, the Greek uh, Plias, uh, singular, uh, derived from, uh, or some say, yeah, some say it's derived from, uh, from Plein meaning uh, to sail because uh, up north it actually uh, opened uh, its appearance in the east opened the sailing season and its setting in the west closed the sailing season so in Komo and Manzi 
the bull of heaven, Umnisi Wemvula, announces um, the sailing season. Now, uh, the plural version of, uh, of this rendition, or a better rendition, is, uh, is uh, plios, meaning full, or in plural, uh, many. Maningi, uyandisa, plejadi, or plejaden, in German. Mojaji of the Plejaden, the bringers of rain, Abumni um, According to uh, the customs of uh, the Balubed, uh, Mojaji, the queen judge, cannot leave her crowd. <coughs> actually, very few people know what she actually looks like. Oh, okay. Oh, in the in the in the in the days past, very few people would know what uh, the Mojaji looks like. She was to live a, uh, a life of uh, total uh, seclusion. Totally secluded from, uh, from, uh, from people. Of which um, sounds very similar. It sounds very similar to the story of... Uh, the story of... Uh, <clears throat> The story of uh, ma, 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 Merope in the Greek, or the story of uh, Merope, if you want to, um, yeah, to analyze it. Merope, Marupeng, or yeah, if you want to take it that direction. Uh, Mer, uh, the, the, the story of uh, Merope in Greek mythology, uh, the missing one, the hidden lady of, uh, of the seven stars, uh, the lost one of uh, the Pleiades. These are all uh, the titles that she... Uh, that uh, the star um, has, the star Meropa, of which uh, she is uh, the faintest among uh, those uh, seven sisters. And so she hides herself, Meropa hides herself, just like uh, the Queen Mujaji, the judge queen with her sister wives, the seven wives. There's more stars there, but uh, the star law has given us seven, has given us seven because six, you can actually see them but the seventh one you can't it's hidden it's hidden just as uh, the customs of our people the customs of mujaji and i know that you're probably thinking this is uh oh, this is conjecture this guy that way in Zango or something but uh, <laughs> there's actually another point to actually further uh validate uh, my assumption the annual rain making ceremony of uh, mujaji is held in november <laughs> it's held in November. As uh, the, the Plejadin or the Pleiades appear in the eastern, ca eastern sky in the evening, the Malubedu with the, Muj the Queen Mujaji, that's when they host their annual rain dance. That's when they are hosted. In the month when, the sl the, when, in the month when Isilimela rises in the east, in the month when Abo Abom Obomavunda, the bringers of the rain, rise in the east. And so um, this is not uh, this is not just uh, conjecture. It's not conjecture. I'm not just pulling these things <laughs> out of my ass. They need to be able to correlate, they need to be able um, to syncretize. And so now, with everything that I've put to you, the bull of heaven, Jehovah Bubele, the God who can supply our needs. Why? Because she brings the rain. The rain, Evun Lisa, our seeds in the soil. So that in the summer solstice, they can be quickened or they can be ripened. And so, the judge among the Balubedi represents the sacred cow of heaven which blesses us with the summer rains. She is Hathor. She is Heteru. She is El Toro or El Tor in the flesh. Umvunjigazi. Umvuleni Uchama. Umnisi Wemvuli Langalibalele. In the flesh. And as I keep saying, guys, as I keep saying, when you strip down these dramas, when you strip down these mythologies, and you do away with all the isms of literal interpretation, what are you left with? 
When you do this, these stories begin to unravel and make more sense. See, if you remove all the draping of the narrative, what you are left with is obukaba, obukaba, ka, ka, ka. <laughs> That's what you are left with. You are left with the primitive cause behind the supposedly sophisticated esoteric, esoteric schools, sorry, of the Kabbalah or the Kabbalah. That's what you have. You take everything away. And what remains, you will find Ubu Kaba, the primitive customs we inherited from my animist uh, ancestors. Sizalwa nga makaba, tina abisto. Sizalwa nga makaba, heathens if you will, the worst kind. The kind that's the kind that founded civilizations. Amakaba did that. Amakaba gave us the written script, the alphabet. Amakaba gave us the star laws used by astrology and astrotheology, which paved the way for modern uh, theology. The modern theology you find in these pulpits, it is the animist star laws that's where it comes from it comes from the star laws of amakaba that's where it comes from and this is why uh most of these scriptures or bible texts uh, don't make sense in these religions because most of these stories are actually a composite of uh, star law folklore primitive animist beliefs and traditions that's what it is and ultimately that is why we cannot understand it because we've become too we've become too clever we've become too clever we have lost the simplistic logic we've lost simplistic logic logic that says every every late october into november when these stars are here the rains come we give thanks we deify, we deify those principles. We have, we have lost that simple logic. That is why these scriptures don't make sense to us because they are based on very primitive animist beliefs and traditions. Animist cultures did not, they did not, please hear me, our animist ancestors did not learn the customs of uh, sacrifices from the bible or from the hebrews <laughs> no those scriptures are based on the animist beliefs and traditions of our ancestors inkolo si funde kumakaba did you hear that word inkolo the n k again inkolo or ukolwa Ugukolwa, Uguzi Kanisela, Ugus Kanisela when an apagat Ugus Kanisela when an apagat. When you take these words back to their roots, they start making sense. Don't listen to these dimwits. Ukolwa, Ukolwa is evil, Ukolwa is not right. No. Understand the words, understand the words. And they begin to unravel. And so, yes, that is all. That is all I had. That is all I had. And again, again, black child, if you know what's good for you, <coughs> we need to spend less time in the old scriptures. We need to spend more time unpacking the scriptures of today assimilating them and syncretizing them to our understanding and our customs especially the ones that are based on metaphysical premises that is what we should be doing the gods are not in the old scriptures anymore we are searching in the wrong place and that is why we cannot do anything as a people because we are looking for power in the wrong places 
our kids need to get with the scriptures of today. The time when our kids know their Bible verses better than the scriptures of today, it's not going to take us anywhere. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Do not get me wrong. The old text, if read and interpreted accurately, will give you the keys for the foundation to set up those principles, the metaphysical principles that shape and weave all physical phenomena. You will get the principles there. Yay. You will find the principles there, but you will not be able to use them because the language has shifted. And this is why I put it across to you today that um, Jesus, Christ, Heru, Mohale, Matreya, whatever you want to name it, as a force, it's what? It is electricity. And it is the only force used by God to do what? To unravel his universe of motion. So yes, guys, that's it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And yes, we are also on uh, Facebook. It is Nga, N-G-A. Thank you for listening.